Hello, it's Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services here in Plymouth, Indiana. And in this video, we will take up from where we left off with the practice auto rotations in a previous video, and we will discuss full down auto rotations or actual uh, forced auto rotations. As you know, we discussed at the end of the practice auto rotation during the flare at 6 to 10 feet off the ground, you rejoin the needles in the green. That way as you level, you can hover the aircraft with the adjusted pedal work. Of course, you're having to add more pitch onto the tail rotor because you're adding power, thus torque, to the aircraft. If you are practicing a full down auto rotation to a runway, you will level the helicopter and then cushion the aircraft as it descends the rest of the way to the ground by pulling the collective up the required amount. Now the actual height that you will flare over the runway will depend on which aircraft you are flying. If you are flying, for example, an R-22 Robinson with a short tail boom and a relatively low inertia system because of the uh, small rotor system, then you will need to flare low enough to where when you level, you have adequate inertia in the rotor system to cushion your landing down onto the runway. In an R-22, you will find yourself pulling the collective almost to the top, if not all the way to the top, as the aircraft settles to the runway. In an Enstrom, for instance, you will find yourself flaring a little higher to protect the tail boom from striking the runway. And as you level, you will find that there is a lot of inertia in that spinning rotor system and you may not be pulling it all the way to the top as you descend to the runway. Some people will do an auto rotation full down and leave some forward speed in it. If you have no wind, you will find that forward speed upon contact with the runway is probably going to happen. Probably a slide of five to 10 feet after contacting the runway. It is possible if there is some wind, anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 knots, that you can flare level and descend cushioning the landing with no forward slide. A zero slide or zero forward uh, recovery onto the uh, runway. I have experienced seven forced auto rotations in actual flight. This is primarily because as I was building my time to become a commercial pilot, I was forced to fly things that I could afford. I owned a 1958 Hiller, which probably should have been in a museum. And I flew it until the transmission failed in flight. The Sprague clutch let go and allowed the uh, rotor system to continue spinning in the green as I descended and landed safely with no damage to the aircraft in an open field. That aircraft had to be sold because of the expenses that um, I would have to incur me and my partners, that is, uh, to rebuild the engine and the transmission because in that aircraft, those two devices use the same oil. Uh, that was going to be very expensive. This left me with very uh, limited options and I decided to purchase an experimental helicopter, uh, which was in my budget at the time, and I owned a Rotorway 162F. Now the Rotorway 162F has a very low inertia system, just like a Robinson R22. Uh, 
there is not a special regulation on it like the Robinson product because um, they are experimental. Uh, the experimental nature of a helicopter can be dangerous because uh, people can put whatever they want on these aircraft without getting FAA approval. Uh, my aircraft um, basically was powered by um, a rotorway engine that they make uh, themselves. Uh, it has striking similarities to a Volkswagen. It uses a Saturn ignition module times two. It uses a dual FADEC system. It uses two electric fuel pumps. And the main rotor system is driven initially by a chain in the kit, but most people would uh, convert it over to um, a ProDrive cog belt drive system. This uh, drive system cog belt broke twice on me. I uh, went through three belts during own, my ownership of the aircraft. Uh, two times the belt broke causing a forced auto rotation due to uh, the engine um, remaining running although not powering the rotor system. This can be confusing for a split second because it's not the engine out that we always imagined. Um, the engine is still making noise. Uh, in fact, in that aircraft, it was um, hitting the rev limiter. Um, and it took a second to realize that the, the needles were splitting, the rotor RPM was dropping, uh, the engine RPM was staying at the top. Uh, so this is not uh, a type of uh, emergency that, that we think about uh, dealing with. We always think about uh, the engine shutting off. Uh, other emergencies that I experienced in flying uh, my rotorway was the um, Saturn ignition uh, shutting off on me um, when I uh, rolled the throttle down to practice an auto rotation on the runway. Uh, I was able to uh, land at aircraft with no damage. Um, I did experience a crankshaft break in the engine during a uh, hover taxi here at the airport and I was able to land that uh, with no damage. Um, I was uh, actually in flight in a customer aircraft when um, a turbine rotorway uh, shut off um, in Atlantic Beach, Florida and landed on, on a uh, street in that town uh, with no damage to the aircraft. Um, I had a calling um, fiberglass calling blow off um, the top of a rotorway and impact the rotor system and entered a auto rotation uh, due to the fact that uh, I did not know what the loud uh, banging noise was um, landed that aircraft with no damage. Um, the Auto rotations where uh, the cog belt broke, uh, both of them are documented accidents. Those are the two that actually caused damage. Uh, one was because I landed um, in a baseball diamond after uh, having to clear some very tall trees and pulling the RPMs down to do so. And then trying to gain the RPMs with a very aggressive flare towards the end of the auto rotation before I leveled to cushion the landing. In this flare, since it was so aggressive, I did impact the tail boom. That aircraft was repaired and then a couple years later, um, another cog belt broke and I was forced to land in a mature cornfield and the corn actually destroyed the rotor blades and the tail rotor assembly uh, actually came out of the uh, tail boom uh, because of the impact uh, of the tail rotor blades with the corn. So I guess I'm telling you that uh, you know you're listening to somebody that has actually conducted uh, auto rotations in the field and never so much as uh, got a bruise or a cut from it. Um, 
Sometimes the aircraft may be damaged, depending on the circumstances. Um, sometimes if everything is just right, then maybe no damage to the aircraft. Um, the key is, is that energy that you're trading all the way to the bottom in the auto rotation is very important. Uh, your potential energy is your altitude. So maintaining good altitude at all times uh, in flight is a way of having stored potential energy. Keeping your RPM in the operating range is kinetic energy. Keeping forward speed is also another form of kinetic energy. As you enter that auto rotation and you are falling, you are trading that potential energy or altitude to keep your kinetic energy, your forward speed, and your RPM. And then at the last minute, you're conducting that flare at just the right height for the aircraft you're flying so that you can level and have enough inertia to cushion that landing by pulling up the collective as you settle to the ground. So I hope this helps and feel free to contact me at gclevelandcfi at gmail.com. Uh, check out my website www.clevelandhelicopterservices.com and if you have a video you would like to see on my YouTube channel leave it in the comments below and I will work up a video on the subject. Uh, if you like the video please click the like button and if you want to see future videos that I put out uh, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified. Um, I do not have uh, fancy camera equipment and I do not edit my videos so uh, it helps you to get to know me for who I really am and I do flight instruction and check ride preparation right here at Plymouth, Indiana and I will be teaching you uh, the same as I am standing right here in front of this camera uh, should you ever come and train with me. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video.